So um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I can see that our participant numbers are slowly rising, but it's two o'clock, so I think we should be British and, and get going with this webinar. I'd like to welcome you all to this premiere of a documentary, Protracted Displacement and Urban Crisis, that has been put together by SDI Kenya, Koch Films and Know Your City TV. My name is Lucy Earle. I'm a principal researcher in the Human Settlements Group at IID, and I lead our work here on forced displacement in urban areas. So I've realized um, that uh, moderating a type of virtual event, I don't need to shout over a busy room, bang, my, bang a spoon on a glass or, or knock a gavel on the table. But what I do have to do is convince you that you want to stay with us in this window and, and watch the film with us this afternoon. But I really think that we are gonna be able to hold your attention. This film really is a fantastic portrait of life for refugees in Nairobi. And after we've watched the film, there's going to be an opportunity from the people involved in making it and also making it happen. And there will also be opportunities to ask questions. Um, we're going to have a, an introduction to um, the software after the film. Um, uh, but uh, there, there is an opportunity to ask questions of our panelists. Um, we also have a, a, a presence on Twitter this afternoon. So the hashtag is protracted displacement. And there is an opportunity to comment and um, ask questions there as well. So I'm going to give a full introduction to our speakers later on after the film, but for now I'm going to hand over to Andrew Norton, who is the Executive Director of IID, for some opening remarks. Thanks, Andy, over to you. Thanks very much indeed, um, Lucy. Um, and welcome to everyone uh, to this event, uh, effectively the premiere of a very powerful film, uh, Protracted Displacement in Urban Crises. I'd like to welcome the participants, Tora Turing um, from Norwick, uh, Jack Macau from SDI Kenya, Jacqueline Wanyonyi, uh, project coordinator SDI Kenya, um, Abdi Wahid um, from Koch Films, Camilla Abdirahman, um, who also worked on the documentary, and Enoch Oyu, uh, documentary chief editor, Koch Films. So um, I just wanted to go through that because it is a very informative, a very powerful, a very compelling, and I think also a really important uh, film. Um, there's a lot you can get out of this. So we're very pleased to welcome you to this premiere. Um, the film was funded jointly by Norick and IID's Frame Funds. Um, the issues are of great interest and concern to us um, and all the partners. Uh, particularly at this moment, this pandemic moment, where which is intersecting with so many other crises and sources of vulnerability and stress on various communities. Um, it's a partnership with uh, some shack dwellers international Kenya. Uh, IID has a very long standing partnership with SDI, um, which is a sort of multi country federated network of. Uh, grassroots organizations that historically have focused on um, activities like community savings, also empowering people through enumeration and engagement with municipal uh, authorities, and also seeking workable solutions for slum upgrading and for improvements to basic services. I want to just note how significant it is that SDI in Kenya are seeking to understand better the experience of refugees living in Nairobi's slums. About 60% of refugees globally live in urban areas, um, but as they don't receive humanitarian assistance, at least on the same scale, and that's made graphically clear in the film, their lives, livelihoods, and experiences in urban centers are not well documented or understood. And this film, I think, plays an important role filling that gap. So IID is also working to fill these knowledge gaps through the um, research project Protracted Displacement in an Urban World, led by Lucy Earle, who's um, moderating today's event, um, that compares the livelihoods and well-being of refugees in camps and in urban areas in four countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, Afghanistan and Jordan. SDI is one of our partners in Kenya, alongside Masino University and Samuel Hall, which is a social enterprise. Now, what you're about to see in terms of the content of the film is challenging. It's emotionally powerful, I think. Um, and 
it's particularly timely given the way in which COVID is affecting multiple communities, but um, we're focusing particularly today on the precarious livelihoods of refugees. And again, to see um, a grassroots organization rooted in the Kenyan environment taking on this issue is particularly heartening and particularly important. So at this point, I'd like to hand back to Lucy and just again, thank everyone involved in the production of the film that you're about to see as well. Maisha si mbaya lakini sasa vile mfurugano wameanza ndio mzee wangu anafurugana na hawa hawa watu huko anasema atwe na peleka chakula nini mzee usiku anatafuta ameshinda mambo kama hiyo ameshinda kulala hata mimi mwenyewe mzee anaenda nayo mzee analala nje anachangina na pata anashika anaenda naye mimi ninachukua watoto naenda kulala kwa mama yangu kwa sababu naogopa hawa Sababa suliti warin urumu na memman urumu ni jarame ka gara gal war gara gal jarabar amma warru kunin karan roba ha man yahin baka khara khisati amma nur gabana baki yudu bisan baka al kan al kan baka isan tidi man be ru man yahin kara bira baka isan kunu du fan al kan baki yahin an du bisan bila kan awanu khani ani tu bin lin an fakhna amma sababa sunu rai ka khae ay abban ke sani war gara gal kar kara janititi sabab suniti biyar rabu dende dende ni jichuan ikifika to to seven ndio vita ilianza tukaanza kutoroka tukakimbizwa na mimi nikaenda hivyo ndio nili nilianza saa kuzunguka hiyo Kongo ilifika pahali tulikuwa tunashinda tukikimbizwa marafiki zangu wengi wakakufa pia wenye nilikuwa naona wakakufa alafu nikaendelea tu kutoroka niliona watu wakikufa saa mimi nikaendelea kutoroka tu jo hakuna kitu kingine ningefanya sikuwa na fair sikuwa na kitambulisho za kunipitisha kwa boda saa ilibidi tu ni dandi ni dandi erori ilikuwa ni rodi ya muzigo ni dandi ya kutoka kwa boda ya, ya Kongo na Kenya nikafika Mombasa road saa ndio niliacha hiyo erori kaenda juu nilikuwa nimechoka nikapumzika kiasi alafu asubuhi nika dandi ya nyingine Alafu hawa anasema ati mwanamwambia mzee wana support hawa wale wako nje. Ana support hawa wanapelekea hawa chakula, wanapelekea hawa maneno. E, ya hii watu wako nje hii abao. Si hawa ndio sasa wanamwambia mzee wangu wanapelekea chakula, wanafanya nini? Yangu atana habari yake. Yeye mwenyewe ni mtu mkubwa mzima. Sasa ispokuwa ni amri ya Mungu ameshika 
Sasa kwa hivyo tu wamefurukana wanawake wanashikwa wanakata hata matiti wanatandika wanafunga hata mimi mwenyewe amelala karibu wiki kwa huko alafu sasa mfila amelala hata siku tisa siku ya kumi sasa mama yangu amenipanga ametorosha mimi anachukua watoto yote Nilitoka Somalia 2000. Na mimi nilikuwa na 8 years, je nilizaliwa 92. Nilikuwa kwa soko tuko tunacheza. Vitu tukaanza vitu zikaanza kulupuka, vita ikaanza. Hata sikwenda nyumbani, niko na mama mwingine tu akanichukua, tu kama amenibeba, akaingia na mimi kwa rori. Wakatoroka. Hata sikuweza kwenda kwa mama yangu au baba yangu. Kutoka hiyo siku baka wale sijai waona. Mimi nilistukia tuko Kenya and uh, refugee na nilipouliza mama yangu um, kuhusu family akaniambia family yangu ni UN Kuniambia family yangu ni UN ndio nikamuelezea tulikujaje tukaingia UN akanielezea kwa kulikuwa na vita huko wakatoroka wakati watu walipigana wakatoroka ndio akanileta kwa UN tupate usaidizi jua hatuna family nyingine spokuwa tu yueni tusaidie msichana mmoja ndiye aliweza ku, kuanza kunitrend kunyoa uh, sandio nikajua na mimi nikatafuta kazi napata shida juu nikiata ni kuwe na pesa siwezi fungua biashara tani kifungua biashara hawezi uh, kubali jumisi mu Kenya kwangu ilikuwa ngumu jo si, si kwa na jua Kiswahili si kwa na jua hakuna lugha yao nilikuwa najua nilikuwa najua ya kwetu pekee rafiki yangu mmoja ndiye alinipeleka aka nikafika nika hapo kwa UN ndio nikaweza kupewa hizo karatasi hiyo pepa ni ya kakuma kwa re, kambi ya marefiji lakini si kuenda ya nilikuwa nimezoea maisha ya, ya Nairobi nao marafiki zangu na nilikuwa naona nao ndio wanaweza nisaidia nikienda huko nitaka nitaka chini ningoje kila kitu kwa kampo tupewe lakini nikiwa hapa Nairobi najifunza hata na kazi hata niende mahali pengine naweza fanya Tumevuka hii hapa upande ya Moyale, Moyale Kenya. Habila mevuka Moyale Kenya iko rafiki ya mzee yangu, uko uko. Sasa ame tumeulizana, ameuliza kila kitu, naambia mimi ni vipi ya fulani na kuna watoto. Alafu nasema umeweka mimi, umepatia mimi dereva. Na, na, na yani kama mtoto tu. Fika hii mama, kuna watoto kwa hoteli fulani hapa isili hiyo hoteli ni ya yani ni ya mtu mtu yetu tu ndo kidogo amefanya fanya hoteli sande ameham amefuta futa nyumba pande hii ya isili ile ametafuta nyumba pande hii ya isili sasa nianza wakati hiyo mzee hajakufa niko naanza kutafuta mzee wangu yani story yake nimefuta nimefuta niko nje alafu ile nimefuta Mzee ameanza kunisaidia. Naanza mbiana namba yake. Sasa amekaa maka nane, maka ya tisa ndio hii amekufa. Masaa hii iko maka nne tangu akufa. Sasa amekufa, mimi nimeingia madari. Hakuna usaidizi yote. 
Yuko anafanya fanya hoteli kidogo hapa is juu wakati iko hizili acha ingia madare hiyo hoteli wame hapa hapa tu area hii ya madare usiku saa 2 wamepigwa sisi wote wale wanafanya huko huko mimi tu na hata wasita mstana moja ananisaidia wamepiga wamechukua kwa kila kitu hata kijiko mimi nimeenda hiyo eni amelilia ata usaidizi yote paka saa hii umefata maka 11 hakuna usaidizi mimi nimepata ilikuwa anajifanyia kibarua tu ndio sasa hata hii nyumba nilipe hata hii watoto wa kule hata uko dada mama kakuma ni maisha ni saa hizi kama zamani vile ilikuwa nimesikia nimesikia wakati hata sisi tumeja ingia UN maisha ya dada na ya kakuma si mbaya lakini saa hii nimesikia maisha ya huko ni ngumu kidogo sasa ndio mimi nasema wacha tu nijifanyie kwa maana nilikuwa najifanya biashara mimi mimi nimemtua biashara yani mtua kumezoea kufanya fanya biashara hajazoea kukaa hivi tu ni ngoje hata kwa wakati kwa mzee sikai hivi ni ngoje mzee wangu nafanyia tufanyia kazi ndio nipate sasa mimi nasema bidi hata hiyo ni ameniuliza hivyo kama nataka kwenda kakuma wakati ya kwanza mimi nasema hapana mimi nimeitoa kazi nimezoea kufanya kufanyia kazi wacha nijifanyie wakati ameibiwa hapa hoteli mimi wakati hiyo ndio sasa nilikuwa nataka wao wanasema nataka kupeleka kakuma ama nataka kukaa hapa mimi nasema hapana mimi nikae hapa nifanye kazi Hivyo tu nataka tu kujifanyia kazi na hiyo kazi saa hii hakuna hata biashara hakuna saa hii watu hakuna pesa nyumbani ni nyumbani hata kama ni mbaya lazima nyumbani pali mwezaliwa ni si mbaya lakini sasa vile huko iko shida si maisha hapa hapa iko salama si pali iko salama tu ndio mzuri mdogo nikiwa tuseme 14 13 hapo ile vile mnalala ngaibi nje kwa street na watoto wengi mnashikwa na kanjo hiyo hata mimi nimepitia mnachapwa mnakimbia mimi nimetoka mbali sana this stories zingine hata nikipiganga nasikia ngapi baya sana naona ngani kama siko na bahati ya maisha kuna msimamo mwingine alikuwa anga hapo mali anauza chai ndio mimi nilikuwa napenda kukaa hapo nje kwake sasa yeye alipoa pesa sasa mimi si jika nyaliongea huo mtu alikuja kama amenibeba juju nile tu nile umumanga nile umumanga mkono nikamsukuma ndo nikatoroka kwa hiyo room nilikuwa karibu tele pies nilistukia nilijipata Kenya. Kufika Kenya kila mtu akashuka kwa gari akaenda nje yake. Mimi nikabaki hapo nimeshinda na mwenye hata alinisaidia pia alienda nje yake. Sasa mimi nikaanza kukufuzunguka tu kwa street. Naenda kwa msikiti naomba chakula. Naenda naenda tu kwa Somali naenda wakiona naongea Kisomali wananisaidia. Niwaambia story zangu wananisaidia. Sasa hivyo ndo nili nili grow kwa street. Alafu nilikuwa naenda ngama ali baba yule alikuwa anafanya kazi, alikuwa alikuwa anafanya kazi kwa hoteli. <coughs> Sasa alikuwa ananipa ngazi zile chakula zimebaki nachukua naenda nao na kula. Hivyo hivyo ndo tulijuana tukapenda tukapendana. Niko na hata kama ana kazi kuliko niendelee na hiyo vile nilikuwa nafanya ndo ni survive afadhali anifanye nini anioe ndo ndo niweze kupata mali ya kulala na mali ya kukula hivyo ndo niliolewa niliolewa nikiwa na 15 years nilisema huyu mtu ananipenda na ataniweka kwa nyumba na na, na nilale na niache kuzunguka kwa barabara juu hiyo maisha nimepitia na hata kukumbuka nikakubali nika nikakaanga tu kwa nyumba yeye anaenda anatafutia napata chakula na kula hivyo hivyo ndo tuka nikafika nika 17 years nikaza kijana wangu kwanza Aliniwa na 40, nikaka 16, 
17 nikaza ni nikaza tena 18 years nikaza msichana wa pili 20 nikaza huyu eh hivyo tu ndo nimestruggle kuishi sijaiona mamaangu sijaiona babaangu sijaiona na familia yetu hata saa zingine anasema ngai wish singeenda hata yuko hiyo kucheza singe separate wana mamaangu na babaangu hata sijua kwa pile family mimi najua ni mzee wangu na watoto wangu tu sana sana watoto wangu kwa naishi na lala kwa nyumba ya mama mwingine alafu akana ameanza ameniambia twende nikupeleke UN alafu mwambie shida yako yote alafu nikamuelezea nikafanya interview wakanipatia kartasi nyingine hapa appointment alafu afta hiyo wananiambia rudi na na rudi afta mwezi moja ama mwezi mbili niko na appointment ikifika alafu naenda nikaingia interview alafu akanipatia mandate na baka saini kutu Nairobi na naisa kwa maka 25 kutoka nimechukua mandate hadi leo inafika maka 25 wakati na kuja Nairobi maka 19 kutoka nimechukua hiyo mandate hadi leo sijai pata usaidizi yote kwa UN hadi leo yani kaanza biashara ya ya njugu watu wengine wananidharau wengine naye wananikaribisha wengine naye wananiongelesha vibaya basi hivyo hivyo tu ndio nikijua ma customer na soko pia nimejua na kuendelea na maisha naenda mapema soko ili nisipate nisipate shida yote narudi tu mapema tena kwa nyumba siku ya saa moja wala siku ya saa mbili wala siku ya saa kumi na moja, wala siku ya saa kumi na mbili ndio nimewaacha mtoto kwa nyumba na hakuna mtu anaangalia mimi tu ndo mama mimi tu ndo baba kwa hivyo hakuna mtu nimewaachia yeye ndo maana narudi tena mapema kwa nyumba mimi na, naenda nga kazi ya mtu napata pesa kidogo alafu ama napeleka shule ya serikali kama isile ya pot alafu akasoma soma kiasi alafu hata mimi sina adui sina sina pesa ifu ndio yakawacha hiyo shule ameanza kuacha naambia kwa nini naacha shule mimi sati chana niulize kitu fulani kitu fulani na wewe nikukuliza wewe una alafu sasa nitafanya nini ameniambia ifu ndio akawacha shule Sipo ndo kwa kwa wache. Eh. Sisi ndo wale wa refuge kama wa kwanza Kenya. Sasa tukua kwa camp. Mishi maisha yangu yote Kenya. Eh hapa Madhare. Lakini nilikuwa anda UN. UN ndo me peleka shule kutoka 1 mpaka 8 nikatoka hapo ikanipeleka college ya inaitwa YMCA ikanipeleka YMCA since 1996 to 2000 ndio UN liko na nisaidiaga na hata shule hao ndo wamenilipia kila kitu hata document zote niko nazo prove ya kuoneshana niko UN ndo imenisaidia na amini kama full status refugee wala watu wamezaliwa wakalelewa na wakaishi under UN Niko na proof zote mpaka nikiwa YMCA college nilikuwa nalipwa nikile allowances nilikuwa napata sasa wakati hiki tuote ilisimama wakati 2000 mama yangu ndo alikufa program yote ikasimama kasimamishwa nikaangaika kutoka 2000 bila tunafukuzwa nini kila kitu naambiwa wewe yuko nini 
ndo niliweza kuenda na document wakati wale ma staff walichenjiwa nikaenda nikaji explain nikawa toleo documents wakaniuliza nilikuwa wapi nikamwambia nimehangaika tu madhara na ndio wakaanza kunianzia kuniuliza maswali wakanirudishia zile ma documents zangu zile za kuoneshana juu nilikuwa nasumbuliwa pia saa nyingine nashikwa na askari unaulizwa ID au una karatasi yoyote sasa inabidi utafute hiyo karatasi juu huku uwezi pewa ID na huku unaona uwezi angaika juu hapo unaulizwa baadhi ya mzazi nini uwezi pata ID sasa inabidi uende pale uchukue karatasi ya kuprove wewe uko under UN ki document yote ile unaonesha polisi kwa hard kwa sababu unaenda hauingii pale bila karatasi yote na pale kuingine itaji appointment hauwezi ingia hivyo sasa nimekaa nikahangaika nikawacha naona nikienda saa nyingine unaona sina job na hustle kitu na hustle na kule hiyo siku sasa siwezi enda huko ndaenda tu ndahangaika nirudi sasa naona afadhali ni hustle nipate ile kitu kula ju nikienda UN ndambo tu enda kauna karatasi yote ama kuja siku fulani nikahangaika for karibu since 2000 to 2010 nikahangaika hapo katikati ndio nilipata mtu anaweza ni direct hapa isili kaniambia niende kwa mtu fulani nimpe hizo karatasi ndio kanituma huko nikapata usaidizi kupata appointment sai maisha ime change sana jo e corona ime tukaria kafla corona ikue i maisha iko sawa hata kama ni kibarua we naenda unafanya unapata kitu yako ya ya kusurvive naye hata kulipa nyumba hata kukula at least watu watu walikuwa meingiana na deal ilikuwa kidogo iko mzuri mzuri unapata mavibarua lakini kutoka corona ikuje isilili ya kwa lockdown na huko ndio sasa zingine tunaenda kufanya vibarua za hoteli sasa hakuna kuingia huko inabidi u survive hapa kitio yote ukipata mia unaipigia budget mnakula la nini mil moja kwa siku kuna pesa yote ya nisoko naona peleka alafu deni deni ama nikipeleka nikipeleka ya jana nachukua leo nikipeleka ya leo nitachukua kesho ndio corona kafanya hivi tuko lockdown msinga mzimbili na msimili na nusu Ambo ndo soko karibu. Esa katoroka. Na hakuna mahali yoyote unapata usaidizi hata kwa UN ama wapi hakuna. Tivije anasema anapatia hata nyumba jirani yangu anasema mimi sina kitambulisho huwezi patia. Hauwezi peleka hiyo appointment ukipeleka nani atakubali wale mtu unampeleka na kuambia pana order imetoka ni ya mtu akona kitambulisho ama kama ni kuna corona ama wakati corona iko kama nimegonjeka sasa niende hospitali ama nike kwa nyumba unaweza hivyo eh kwa hivyo send us hospitali aka tu kwa nyumba jiangalia tu ile barabara mimi naweza ama napiga napika chai nyauzi naweka tangeuzi alafu mimi mwenyewe najiangalia na dawa ya ya kienyeji ana juu kuna corona ukienda hospitali hata watu hospitali hizi kukaribisha
nikasaini kwa mgonjwa kuna hospitali iko hapa juu ya ni bure tunaendanga eh. kama si hiyo watu wengi wangekuwa kufia kwa nyumba sisi tukiendaga kuna siku nimeenda nikasema mimi ni mgonjwa wakaniambia utapewa appointment sasa mimi sikuelewa ni nini lakini kuna watu huenda wanatibiwa wala watu wako na doa na sasa ndio mimi nashangaa hao mtu wako na gari ako na nini yeye yeah, ako anatoka hapa anaenda anapata medical huko kwa UN sisi tukienda unaulizwa appointment ya leo aenda sasa una prefer utamaliza fare yako umekopa fare uende upange line uangaike uumie urudi bila hata kutibiwa sasa una prefer karibu madhara mzima inasaidiwa na EMSF inasaidia sana by the way EMSF iko hapa juu kwa sababu sasa hii atasaidia kutoka na wewe hapa uko mgonjwa uingie utasaidiwa hata magari ziko hapo na kila kitu utakuwa kwa hospitali Gava imekuwa ngumu kwa kuwasaidia. You mostly Gava ikiwa kipiana chakula inapiana ngona chief na chief ana wakingi na nyumba kumi. na nyumba kumi, awako wamewa register wao register na ID. So mostly unapata kasa hii wakati wa COVID-19 au wako kwa hesabu ya food wana left you behind. Na sisi tu wa left tuna account tunawasaidia na kama food staff. Ile si mingi lakini ile kidogo tunapata tuna make sure also we account on them. Kenya nilikuja Kenya. Hata sikuwa najua marefiji wanakuanga huko. Nilikuwa naomba lakini hawako wanasikia juu nilikuwa natumia lugha ya kwetu. Sasa ule mwenye anaona anaona huyu si mkenya. Ananisaidia juu ya hiyo ya hiyo story. Sasa venye ni, nienda ni, nikizoea ndio sahihi na wangu. Niliingia umoja ndio nili, nilipata mavijana wengine wakakuwa marafiki sasa akanifundisha kazi nikaanza nikaanza kutafuta kazi sasa ndio nilipata kazi madhare nikahamia madhare sasa na na arauka mapema naenda kazi fika kazi nafanya jioni naangalia ni nini nimefanyia na kuja naweka kidogo ingine na, na naenda na nuasapa na kura miezi kisha hiyo hiyo niweka weka inanisaidia kulipa na mahitaji ingine lakini saa hii maisha ya huku iko poa lakini ni kuasor tu Kenya iko sawa mimi siko anatarajia kuinezaishi hivi. Maisha mimi nilikuwa nimezoea maisha ya kukimbia. Ni mzuri kama serikali ingeitia manani sana. Ikisikia pale kuna marfujiz waende watambulikane. So in case kama kitu imetendeka na mtu aseme tu huyu mtu alikuwa ametoka mahali fulani wanafuatilia inakuwa rahisi kumpata na ina, pia inatakana wakiingia iwe pale wanaenda kuripot waseme tumeingia tunaenda kuishi mahali fulani wanaandika majina zao wanakuwa kwa record naona yeah na most target of foundation also to work na justice centers so wanaka mingi kuripot harassment ya police na also community some are also they see them as a threat because kama ni wa Ethiopia ama wa Somali wana feel ni al shabab na wakiwa ni hawa waganda tuna feel pia ndio wezi kwa sababu hawana documents wamekuja nazo na anytime wanaweza come in na wanaweza come out sasa hakuna kitu ina hold ama hakuna documents za kuonesha kabisa ni mkaji hapa ama utamtoa wapi akifanya no mayo yote kwa sababu una kartasi hata polisi mwenyewe ilikuwa ananisumbua Mama sina karatasi yoyote sina kitambulisho lazima anakusumbua hata polisi amenisumbua hata ile wakati unakupata watu wanasaidia wa Kenya kama kitu yoyote hawezi itwa wanakuambia ni refugee kitu yoyote ikifanyika hata wakati watu na watoto wanacheza pamoja unasikia unaambiwa ni refugee kaka sasa inabidi ujifiche 
uende utafute pia marafiki wengine wale wa kujui ndio wasijue kama wewe ni refuge hata sasa hivi nimekuwa mkubwa nimekaa ndani nikijificha ndani hata wengi hawajui kama mimi ni refuge labda wale wanajua wazazi wangu kutoka zamani ndio wanajua mimi ni ni refuge na nimesaidiwa na refuge hata sasa zingine programs zingine zikikuja hawaniiti kwa sababu wanajua sina nini ya Kenya kitu yote ya kuonesha na eh wakati ilikuwa mgeni hata sisi tumekuja na uoga kwa sababu watu wanasema maisha ya matare ni mbaya matare ni iko watu hata hawezi toka nje usiku hata saa moja huwezi enda duka hata mekuja na uoga lakini kwa sababu hakuna pale aida was ado ya kwenda pale ya kwenda kukaa na watoto hata kama iko na sisi wangu hapa huwezi kupale nikae na watoto kwake si ndio hata mama yangu mwenyewe huwezi kubali nilete watoto ya wenyewe nikae naye huko. Sasa ndio mimi nasema tu acha nijisukume madare, nizoe maisha ya madare. Amezoea tu hapa na nguvu. Kama watu wanasema eh hey, madare watu watoki nje, lakini nimeona tu si mbaya. Nimekaa sasa hivi kaini. Mimi sijai hapa tangu wameingia huko. Hakuna kitu mbaya amefanyikia mimi. Kuna uoga niko nayo kwa sababu wale vijana nashinda nao wengine si wazuri unaona wanaweza kuwa wanafanya kitu mbaya juu wewe unakuja unashikwa ama unaweza ndana kesi haujui na hauna mtu yote anaweza kusimamia na hauwezi kaa peke yako kama mnyama itabidi ukae nao vijana tu wabaya ndio muweze size zingine hata shida inaweza tokea kama mgonjwa mnasaidiwa unawaambia changeni mtoto ni mgonjwa ama bibi ama wewe unaona ile usaidizi lakini kwa uoga iko iko kwa sababu kitu yote iki happen vijana ukujiwa hata wewe unajihesabu tu ndani lakini unaji prevent unajizui haufanyi kitu mbaya lakini sasa hauwezi kaa pia peke yako sasa juu hao watu wa hii area ni wabaya hata wewe unahesabiwa wewe ni mba na hauna uwezo wengine hakuna mali utaenda utafanyaje si ni ku survive tu Hao marufujizi walipoingia kazi imekuwa duni sana kwa wakazi wa Kenya. Uh, wakienda kufanya kazi wakichukuliwa wanalipwa pesa kidogo sana. Wanalipwa pesa hata mwingine anafanyia kazi ya shilingi 3000 na ni kuanzia usubiri mpaka jioni na analala tena. Kila ambao mkao ni mwa, mtu wa Kenya anasema alipwe shilingi 6000 7000. Sisi kama madhare sababu kule naishi tuko nao sisi tumewakaribisha kwa sababu kama mtu mtu asipo mtu asipotoa roho yake asipofungua roho yake ama asipokukaribisha hata wewe uta, sasa utamwacha vile iko hivyo sisi tunawachukulia tu kama watu wa kawaida na tumewaachia tu upande wao wajua sasa unampatia upande wao unamwachia upande wake kwa sababu hujui yeye vile anavyokaa hujui vile anavyowaza kwa mawazo yake sasa nyumba yake ni yake na yako ni yako hata kama ni jirani yako itakuwa tu habari mzuri alafu mnaachana lakini ni hivyo ndio vile tunaishi kali si wamesaidia wameweka RFG hapa Kenya si ndio lakini sasa vile watu wewe na anafaa kufanya ni anafaa tu wasaidiwe niki mambo hii corona ikiisha kwa peleke tu nchi nyingine yake wameteseka sana wa RFG nikiwa hapa Kenya maybe si yoe ni wajanipeleka hiyo sijapata hiyo chance na nafikiria tu nitakuwa mkenya nitafute citizenship ni kwa mkenya nitafute familia 
niishi hapa Kenya. Wa Kenya na refugees siku hizi kwanza wameingiana sana na wanafanya business pamoja. Na ni mzuri sana kwa sababu ni nchi ya Kenya ndio unaweza pata hii kitu ina happen sana katika Afrika. Ukienda ukiangalia hata nchi zingine refugee na wenye nchi hawaingiani vizuri kama South Africa. Sasa hizo unaona demonstrate kwa sababu nini? Refugee wameenda wanafanya business sana. Lakini Kenya unaona kuna freedom. Unakaa watu wameingiana. Eh uko na freedom. Tafadhali tujue nani saidia nipeleke nchi nyingine mali. Sasa rudi kwetu. Juu kwetu kuna shida na bado watu inaisha. Hata mamangu babangu bado sijui kama uko hai. Amekufa ama uko hai. Eh sina simu yao. Eh kutoka nimekuja Kenya siku moja sijawahi ongelesha kutoka siku hiyo tuliwaachana baka leo sina habari yao wala wamekufa ama uko hai haijulikani na nimewashukuru sana kwa sababu hii sauti yetu imenyamaziwa sana na imefichwa sana hii sauti labda hawa watu wamekuja kufanya hii documentary wataiunua sana na hao ndio wataweza kutufikishia mpaka kwa wakubwa ndio maana nimesema nimeshukuru sana kwa hiyo kwa sababu hatukua na sauti nyingine itatufikishia mpaka kwa wakubwa ni hii bila hii hatuna connection nyingine ukienda kwa ofisi utarudishwa chini ukienda hapo unaulizwa document sasa hakuna wakubwa wanaweza jua na Thank you all. And, um, um, I, I hope you all enjoyed um, the documentary. I've, I've seen it several times now, but, but each time I watch it, I, I, something new strikes me. And I'm really looking forward to having this exchange now between people who are involved in the ideas behind it and actually making the film itself. So before we go ahead, I'm just going to briefly um, introduce the, the panelists again. We have Tora Tureng from the Norwegian Agency for Exchange Cooperation, NORIC, who helped to fund the film. So Tora has worked with civil society projects in NORIC for the past five years, and she's currently head of section of the NGO portfolio. And she's worked um, before NORIC in Nepal and England with youth empowerment and human rights projects. And I think some of those themes are obviously coming through in the, in the film, which we have to talk a bit more about her views on her reflections on, on what's been produced um, by SDI and ISTTV. Um, so then we will, um, I'd also like to introduce the colleagues from, from Kenya. Um, so uh, we have um, with us Jack Macau, who's executive director of SDI Kenya. So SDI is Shack and Slum Dwellers International, and they're a network of community-based organizations of the urban poor in 33 countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And also from SDI is Jacqueline Monioni, um, who's a project coordinator and uh, at IID, we work very closely with Jack and Jacqueline on a number of different projects. 
including the one that Andy mentioned earlier on protracted displacement in urban areas. Then we have um, three colleagues who were more closely involved in, in producing the film. We have Abdi Wahid, who is the director of the documentary. He's from Know Your City TV and Coach Film. We have Camilla Abdurrahman. She was an interviewer and the language translator for the KYC TV. And then finally, we have Enoch Oyo, who is uh, the documentary chief, um, chief editor, and he also works for Coach Film. So um, we have a series of, of questions um, that um, we have, I have for, for our panel. And then also, um, if people start, uh, uh, if people start um, asking questions, we'll see if we can also find some time to put those questions to our panel. Um, we're, we're fairly limited, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. So I wanted to put, turn first to, to Tora um, and to hear a bit more about how Norek got involved with SDI Kenya um, and a bit more about Norek, what Norek does, perhaps a bit of an introduction for, for our audience to the organization you worked for. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy. Um, thank you for uh, this arranging this event. Um, the film is very powerful and uh, it's the second time I watch it and um, I completely agree with you that it really brings up something different each time. Um, I'm very happy to uh, be here today to share this um, launch with, with SDI Kenya. It's uh, very exciting. Um, so, I work for NORIC, as you said. Uh, what we do is that we support international partnerships working together. Um, we support the capacity building and um, development of these partnerships. And we have a special focus on young people and uh, how to lift them um, in our collaboration with different organizations around the world. So SDI Kenya, uh, we've been working with them for the last four years um, through their partnership with an Indian organization called Salt Lake City Prayasam. And um, what we've supported is the exchange project Media for Mentors. Um, it's a project that SDI Kenya and their partner in India designed um, with uh, the main goal being to let young people uh, explore their uh, leadership skills through uh, different types of media and, and filmmaking. So it's been uh, really exciting to follow the project as it's developed over the years. Um, the, the goal has been to first um, strengthen the actual um, skills of the young people in filmmaking. Um, but then also to make them more active citizens in their communities. And I think that's where it links closely to, to this film. Um, and uh, something that I've liked a lot about the, the project is that it's always been really important that the young people get to choose the emphasis of the work of what they're working on. Um, this film is, um, is one example of how uh, the young people put their um, their own stamp on, on the product that they deliver. And it's great to see that the quality is so high. Um, really, really good experience. Yeah. So um, briefly, we uh, have been supporting SDI Kenya in this way for the last four years. And uh, most of the crew in the documentary have been on the Media for Mentors Exchange project. They've been working uh, in India. Uh, they've been working in an intercultural team with uh, Indian colleagues. Um, and what we see uh, from our point is that this kind of collaboration makes you see your home community in a different way. You become more sensitive to uh, the, um, the dynamics that are going on there. And I think that's also very visible in this film that uh, how the, um, the refugees are presented uh, I think uh, shows how the participants who've uh, been part of this project have developed their, their skills through being in an intercultural environment prior to this project. Yes, so briefly, that's our history of working with SDI Kenya and how we link to this, uh, to this production. Thanks, Tora. Do you want to tell us a bit more about what you took away from the films you, 
like me and you you've said that every time you watch it you learn something new tell us just a little bit about what what was most interesting or what was newest or perhaps most challenging for you to watch mm, yeah um well uh, of course this is a really powerful uh, presentation of uh of individual stories and I think there are three things that I, I took away it's um it's the fact that it's very respectfully presented um it's a very relevant topic and it's not very often that this perspective of uh, uh both the refugee crisis but also COVID-19 is is presented in mainstream media so I think it's um an aspect that we need to hear more about and it's also very high quality, uh, it's skillfully done. Um, of course, as a, uh, being a, an agency that supports international partnerships, we don't have any thematic expertise on migration issues. So for me, what I take away from this is uh, how it's clear that young people have had a very strong and important role in developing this project. Um, and how it's clear that SDI Kenya takes young people seriously. Um, the, the crew from Know Your City TV have really been able to um, explore uh, the stories here and deliver a product that has um, really high quality. And I think uh, this is also a social issue that the, the film um, indirectly addresses how we have to prioritize young people if we want to see social change in our communities. Um, and seeing how the crew has worked and how they have been involved in this over time, I think that that's an important takeaway as well. So uh, while, of course, the issue of the refugees uh, is the main uh, focus here. I'm championing also the backside of the production with the focus on the young people and the amazing job they've done. Thanks, Dorothy. We'd all second that. So I wanted to turn now to um, colleagues who, um, from Kenya who were involved in, in the ideas for the film originally and then um, colleagues from Oyo City TV uh, who actually went out and, and made the film. So I suppose the first question really is probably for, for Jacqueline or maybe for Jack, and I'm happy for you to, anyone who wants to sort of butt in, um, feel free if you have some extra things you, you want to say to the other panelists. But the first question I suppose is, is why did you decide to make this document about, documentary about refugees in Matare? And perhaps, um, to, perhaps colleagues from SDI could say whether how much engagement they'd had with refugees in Nairobi before this. So over to you guys. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, you know, for, for the last 20 years, uh, SDI and Uganda the social movement in, in, in Kenya has, has worked on issues of land rights and housing and infrastructure, what we call the urban development world. And, and that is where we have existed. Um, issues of, of refugees have been present. If you, if you go to slums, then you will see that there are people from other countries, but it's it's been very marginal and it's not been um, it's not been an issue that um, SDI previously uh, has worked with. So, so when we started to work with IID and talk about doing a research, it, it was um, it was fascinating. One because of the responses that we were getting from people in Madara and in other settlements in, in saying, yes, this is uh, a big issue. Um, has it been in your blind spot? Mm -hmm. So in, in thinking about doing the film, it, it looked like we, we are at a place where we started to frame an issue uh, where two worlds, an urban development world and um, migration world uh, come together. So, so my, migration and refugees in Kenya um, is a big issue, uh, but it's not a city issue. Uh, there are no departments in, in the city. There are no people who, who think and, and work with, with migrants and refugees. Uh, everyone who works with migrants and refugees is at the UN level and is at national government. 
and in in departments like security and and, and internal affairs and 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 therefore another world. Um, so doing the film um, seemed to be a nice place to start uh, to start to tell a story, uh, a story that we can share with. Uh, host communities, the refugees themselves, the city, and, and, and just try and bring all those voices and say, actually, there is, there is an issue here. Um, so so that's, that's, where, that's where the film comes from. Thanks. But maybe, Jackie, you'd like to add to me? Um, I second what Jack says. Um, essentially, during the COVID-19 period, we had a COVID-19 tracker. Uh, that essentially tracked uh, the COVID-19 infec infections in formal settlements. And so we wanted to link uh, this with um, trying to find out more about the refugee uh, population as in our slums and particularly in Madare. Um, and so it, essentially we're also linking it to the protracted displacement um, uh, in an urban world project. And so we have not focused on refugees uh, in the past. And so for us, we thought then we'd start creating those linkages uh, through this documentary. And so um, this, uh, doing the documentary then has been sort of like a way for us to start uh, doing the research, but also then getting, um, uh, getting familiar with the population as far as livelihoods and well-being is concerned. And so I'd say for now, one of the key things that we have realized, if we were to uh, link that to the uh, protracted displacement in an urban world project, is that we have, uh, as far as the Somali community is concerned, we have realized that most of them um, may not necessarily be in Madare. And so what we will have to do then when we get to the focus group discussions is that we expand um, the geographical area that of, of for the research in order to uh, um, focus on that particular um, population. But as far as then answering the question uh, for what opportunities were presented to us, as far as going into the, this documentary, is that um, the KYCV team, team was already documenting COVID-19 uh, experiences of uh, people living in informal settlements and more so uh, in the NOREC project, uh, Media for Mentors Exchange, which was abruptly short, uh, cut short uh, at the start of this year. And so the participants had to come from India in March instead of June. And so we had to meaningfully engage them in some way. And so now tying that with what we were doing with IAD, that was um, an opportunity we did not want to uh, miss. Um, other factors were most of the KYS TV um, crew um, have been familiar in documenting um, refugee experiences in Kakuma in the Dab camps. And so we thought, why not? Why not do it uh, in an urban setting and see how that, uh, that goes or how that informs uh, our work. Um, also then the initial idea was to do sort of like a juxtaposition as far as looking at Madar Islam, refugees living in Madar Islam and those ones living in Isli, which is just the adjacent neighborhood. And I think we've seen that in the documentary, uh, some of the cutaways that we have there. Um, but at the time then we had um, government restrictions like a lockdown or a containment uh, measure in Isli, um, whereby then people are not let to go in and out due to the, due to the COVID-19 situation. However, our team, some of our team have international press passes like Abdi and, and others. And so we thought then we could also leverage on that or at least uh, use that, that opportunity to do that uh, kind of uh, documentary. And so looking at all those factors, we had sort of like a comparative advantage. And so we approached IAD and also NOREC for the funding. And that is how then this came to be. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks. It's great to hear a bit more about the background and to hear how this is a bit bit new in some ways for, for SDI, this, this type of content, certainly not filmmaking, but the content. So we are getting a few questions um, um, on the Q&A about the audience for this film um, and whether or not it's going to be shown to the 
UN and uh, and how people can use this. So before I'm I'm handing over to, to colleagues to answer that question, I can tell you that people in the UN have already seen it. Uh, they've certainly seen the short version of the film. So um, we got some emails last week from the UN Refugee Agency who'd seen a three minute clip of the film that we had uploaded onto IAD's website. And they have included some information about the work that SDI are doing in a briefing to member states that's happening right now. So as soon as this film finishes, I have to jump off and join another one. Uh, and another webinar and tell everyone about this film. So it's already being seen <laughs> in its short version and I'll be able to share the link with member states and UN agencies this afternoon. So that's a kind of international audience, but I think it's quite important as Jack mentioned that the city starts to hear about this type of issue as well. So I'm gonna hand over back to, um, to Kenyan colleagues who can talk a bit more perhaps about the audience in Nairobi. Okay, and, and I don't know, Abdi, uh whether you you want to come in, but but Lucy, generally, as you say, the the, the movie is almost an invitation um, to to as many stakeholders as the social movement then is 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 uh, learning and 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 working uh, with refugees and, and and migrants, and so the film is. is is an invitation to to start a conversation, to to join in 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 the research and and, and to build uh, different networks that uh, have been sort of grappling with, with migration and and displacement for for a long time. But I don't know, uh, Abdi, do you want to come in? Mm -hmm. Yes, I like to to add something that. Uh, we might do a close screening, which uh, we will involve the stakeholders that are involved mostly in uh, refugee related issues here in Nairobi, and also the government of Kenya. Uh, the part that mostly deals with uh, identification of refugees, like giving them the alien card, because most of them, uh, the, the five people we have interviewed, only one of them had the, the opportunity to get the alien card. And they have been here for more than like 10 years. So it's like they really need, uh, we really need to show them and uh, for them to realize that it's a big problem and uh, they do something about it. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Yes, I think it's clear that the issue of documentation is a, is a really difficult one and one that prevents people from accessing the healthcare they need and um, from contributing to the local economy by running businesses and it's a it's a very powerful message one of the very powerful messages from the film and one would assume that it's not so difficult for bureaucracies to start thinking about how to make that process a bit smoother um, I wanted to also um, Jacqueline and other colleagues um, as this was quite new content for you looking at refugees in Nairobi was there anything in particular that surprised you when you went out and started interviewing refugees in Matare? Um, yes, um, I'll start by saying that during the COVID-19 period, there are a lot of, you know, government um, and private sector food distributions in informal settlements. And so refugees being a vulnerable group, the immediate assumption is that they would uh, immediately get relief uh, from these programs. And so having going to the field and interviewing um, uh, this sample group is that we realized that they were completely left out from the process. They could not access any kind of relief, uh, even if they did present their UN documents. Even as Michael has uh, said during the uh, in the in the in the film, is that they are turned away by the people managing that process. And so that was really heartbreaking in a sense because then. Um, the, the, the humanity aspect of it is sort of like removed from people who are uh, managing these processes. And so they had to rely then on perhaps say their neighbors um, and say the Muslim community, if you're a Muslim uh, during Ramadan to get uh, access to these basic needs. Um, another surprise, at least for me, and I'll let my colleagues also speak um, is that they sort of like are straddling between two worlds um, in that then some of them are registered in camps and they also live in the urban areas. And so it's sort of like a hedging 
bets kind of a situation being registered uh, at a camp so that they, their hope will be to be resettled in a third world, I mean third country, sorry. And so they also live in the urban areas just to be self-reliant, which is very you know, reasonable as a human being. And so whichever options co option comes first, which we think from the documentary uh, will be resettlement, is that that is what their hope um, really lies. Um, and one of the factors, sorry, just as I finish, is that the reason as to why uh, we think that they, we have not worked with them specifically as a group within SDI and the savings groups is that they really do not foresee uh, savings as a long-term um, plan for them. And so for them to join, you know, federation within SDI, um, for them that is just, you know, that's long-term and they're, they actually envision themselves being in the urban areas of camps in the short run. And so maybe that's why then we have not really had the chance to really uh, delve deeper into, into that um, uh, topic of you know, refugees and displacement. Thank you. But uh, let me let my, uh, the crew to speak for itself. So maybe Camila. For me, what really surprised me and what I learned is that I came, into, I came to terms with the harsh reality that these people have to deal with. Imagining that these people cannot access basic need, especially during this time of COVID-19, these people cannot access food donation in their area because they, cannot, they don't have an, a Kenyan identity card which is a requirement. These people, they don't, they don't have any family member to rely on while they're here in Kenya. They have children, they have houses to pay rent. You can imagine such a dilemma they're in to deal with their daily lives. It was such heartbreaking to listen to their stories. Uh, what I can say is that uh, what really surprised me is, uh, I think documentation, because uh, uh, if, if you don't have anything to prove that uh, you are either a refugee or a Kenyan, it's hard for you to get access to basic needs or support. And also, I think uh, corruption, corruption, I think also uh, it gets in. That's why I think Michael said in the documentary that it's hard for them to get because they don't have money to bribe uh, the people who deal with giving them alien cards to prove their identity. And also it's hard for them when you are given an appointment letter only and uh, it's like for a month, you are told that come after two months, we'll help you. So it goes on for like 10 years and uh, you don't get any help. So that's, that's really surprised me. And I was like, it's really hard for them. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Enoch can add something. Basically prior to the Prior, prior, prior to the filming of the documentary, I believe that the refugees being the most vulnerable group in a country, that the people should be getting the medical attention first from the government or from any organization that might be hosting them. But when I came to realize that most of the refugees in Kenya, basically in Magare, they don't get access to the medical attention from the from the host from the host organization, which is the UN, basically because they don't have the alien card. Because most of them most of them find it hard to access the alien card, so this also affects this this also affects this also affects them in accessing medical attention. And just uh, as we've realized, one of the interviewers just said that uh, there being no uh, an organization called Medicines, Medicine, Medicine Sun Frontiers, if it were not being, if, if it were not being my diary, they would have been finding it so hard to help to us because it's the only organization, it, it, it's the only organization supporting them to in accessing medical attention. And that was really hurting. Yes, that was, um, that was also uh, quite a shocking thing that, that the interviewer said that without, the idea was that without that, there'd be 
there'd be almost nothing. And one of the other refugees was saying that she would have to just self-medicate and use herbal recipes because there was this idea that she wouldn't be able to get assistance from elsewhere. So that was a very, um, was quite a shocking statement. Um, I wanted to ask some, just a few uh, sort of more practical questions about um, how you found the, the refugees that, the, to, to take, who took part. Um, I wondered, um, but it was difficult to convince people to, to speak in front of the camera. We sometimes get the impression that refugees move to urban areas to kind of disappear and not be visible, um, to try and live a normal life and, and not be under scrutiny or labeled as a refugee. So I was curious as to how you, how you found those people to, to speak with and, and whether it was difficult to convince them to speak on camera. Uh, what I can say is that uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy to find them. Uh, we had a fixer who, was, uh, who lives in Madare. And uh, I talked to him and then he, we went with him a few times to try and convince uh, the refugees to tell their stories. And from my experience, uh, I've worked in Dadaab and also Dadaab refugee camp and Kakuma refugee camp. So I've interacted with, with the refugees in a camp setup. So now it was like an urban setup. It wasn't so hard to convince them because it was like a willing buyer, willing seller kind of situation where, whereby they really wanted to talk to someone and tell their stories and they couldn't find someone. It's like we came at the right time to them and uh, it was, but I had to go like three times, not just once. So that I'll tell them, I'm not alone. I'll come with a crew, the camera people, some other guys. So don't be afraid. We, uh, we had like six people at the, in the beginning. And uh, one of them dropped the last day when we were shooting. She was like afraid when she saw like the crew, there are a lot of people there. And uh, she, didn't, she wasn't willing to tell her story. So we understood her and uh, we continued with the, the, other, the others who really wanted to share with us that part of their story. Thanks, Abdi. Um, and I'm really glad you managed to convince um, most, most of the people to, to speak with us. And I think the final comment was quite powerful from Michael saying, well, I'm glad you've come to make this film because people need to hear the story. And I should say that it's not, it's not unique to Kenya or to Nairobi, this situation. Um, we have a partner organization in Kampala where similarly um, refugees have really struggled to get assistance and to get food during during COVID. So it's not a it's not unique, certainly not unique to, to Nairobi. Um, I had just um, one, I think perhaps final question. I think it's perhaps more for Jack. And it's a question, um, it's a sort of amalgamation of a question that we already wanted to ask you, but also there's been um, a question from um, on the Q&A as well. So the question was really about, about how you think you might work more in future with refugees in Nairobi. Um, and is there, uh, the question was specifically how, how you think we're gonna be able to change, change things for, for refugees. And I think it'd be great to hear from Jack what, what future plans you have, not just in the ambit of the research project we're working on together, but actually more broadly working with the city, um, what, how you think we can start to, to make things change. Thank you, Lucy. Um, so, so our immediate plan, and, and I think this is then the stepping stone to, to the longer plan, is, is uh, to research more, um, uh, which we will do uh, together with IAD and, and other partners, the Maseno University in, in Kenya and Sabaho, another uh, research organization. Uh, Within, within the project. One, just to create um, information that the stakeholders and especially the city can, can bite to and, and understand and, and to be able to frame uh, this issue and, and frame it a bit differently uh, from the way it has been framed as, as a national security issue and, and a UN uh, refugees issue. Uh, to make it a livelihoods uh, discussion, a, a discussion that affects not only the refugees, but also the communities that, that host them and, and, and their economies, their significant economies and so on. So, 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 so our longer term strategy then is, is to invite more the city uh, uh, into the discussion and, and start to, to speak to people 
in, in uh, social departments and in housing departments and in planning departments and say, this is, is not going to end tomorrow. Uh, it needs to be a planning issue. It needs to be in that space where we, we discuss what we do with informal settlements and, and other ways in which urban poverty has money manifested. Uh, so so uh, we see that as our sort of longer term vision, uh, make it uh, bite-sized, right, right now it's, it's, it's a, a real uh, issue that, that even uh, local councillors and, and, and organizations and a lot of organizations in Madari and elsewhere that are providing charity and relief uh, but that can contribute to the syst systemic issue of, of migration. So that's how we see it. Mm. Thanks, Lucy. Mm. Thanks. I just wanted to um, invite participants to make any final comments before we hand over to Andy and to our executive director to, to give his reflections on the film and to close. But I wanted to just check if we've if you've said everything you want to say or if there's anything else you'd like to, to say to our to our audience online. Well, in that case, um, Andy, can I ask you to come back on screen and um, tell us your your main takeaways from the film? Thank you very much, Lucy, and huge thanks to all the partners, to Norek who co-funded it, to the filmmakers who did a fantastic job. And it was fascinating to hear from Abdi about the empathy and the sort of human contact that was needed to get these stories. And also, of course, uh, to SDI Kenya, it's just really heartening to see basically a grassroots organization um, from you know, urban centers in a country like Kenya taking up this issue with solidarity, with compassion and with empathy and seeking to take it forward with um, stakeholders you know, using their voice. Um, so all fantastic. Uh, just three things really um, I'd like to finish on. The, the film demonstrates, you know, the medium as obviously an instrument for telling stories. Um, and the stories are incredibly powerful and at times distressing, but they also show the dignity and determination of the people whose stories we come to learn something about. And that's really important too. Um, it's an instrument of voice, Lucy, you picked up that very powerful um, quotation at the end from one of the, the main characters we follow, the young man, um, a chance to put his lived experience in front of stakeholders who could make a difference, whether they're in the city, in the country, or even globally. And we from IID now have a responsibility to work with others, including SDI, have a very powerful international network to do that, to put these stories um, in places where they can make a difference. But finally, and most importantly, I think the film is a call to action. Um, it demonstrates how major these challenges are. Um, COVID has brought all kinds of challenges, the ones we see, but others as well. Borders are being shut. There are all kinds of things which are getting in the way of the kind of just and inclusive global response that we need in these vital areas, refugee hosting and protection. This issue of the right to identity and documentation comes up regularly and powerfully and you watch it with a sense of frustration that this must be something that can be fixed. And we have examples also of organizations like MSF that work effectively even in that environment. But that thing about the barrier that the lack of papers um, creates for accessing relief social protection, but also basic services. Um, this also is, is just very powerfully expressed and expressed indeed as a call to action. Um, so I'd like to finish again with huge thanks to the partners and you know, from IID's point of view also, huge thanks to you, Lucy, and to the others working on this um, really important program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, now, as we just bring this webinar to an end, we'd like to encourage you to um, complete um, our survey um, to help us um, improve our online events. We really uh, appreciate your feedback and your comments. Um, and also, um, if you want to learn more about IID's work responding to protracted displacement, 
um, you can find it um, in the link that I'm just about to put into the chat box. Thank you very much for your time and we will end the webinar there.